Hello, hello. Um, real quick, who all is a, involved with distribution in this crowd? Good amount, good amount. All right, well, I've been brought up here not because I'm an expert in SOTOL, uh, not because I know everything about uh, distribution, but because I know how to get on my back bar, and that's probably good information for you all. So for me, I want to start off because I know we talked a lot about premier brands and the popularization that comes through that. You can throw George Clooney on a bottle and move a lot of booze. But for me, what really matters is bang for the buck and ways that you can move things and ways that you can inspire a cocktail is uh, one I want to start off with the difference between kind of that premier brand but that tiered brand. Uh, when you talk about bang for the buck and you're looking at, I'm a, a finance and accounting major, so when uh, you know we change up a bottle in our well, we change up a bottle in our batches, and you're seeing a different sway between 13% cost of goods sold up to 17 cost of goods sold. My investors who don't know anything about alcohol, they just know how to throw money around, they're gonna ask questions. So that tiered pricing for me is very important. You wanna have something that's gonna go in that well that you're gonna start off at. And I've actually developed menus in the past that has tiered pricing worked in, so you can walk in with, to a $12 cocktail, a $14 cocktail, and a $22 cocktail just in those tiers. So you're messing with not only giving options, not only giving options that aren't overwhelming, but also playing with that mentality in your brain of win and loss, right? When you're talking about tiered pricing on a marketing scale, you're talking about, okay, if I get the cheapest one, what are my wins and my losses? I'm getting something that's not as good a quality, but I'm saving money. If I get the most expensive, what are my wins and my losses? I'm getting something super baller, but my bank account's gonna hurt. If I go right in the middle, what are my wins and losses? I'm saving a little bit of money. I'm getting something that's quality. If you look at watch brand companies, almost in every brand of watch, they have three options. They don't really want you to buy that top tier level. They want you to get that middle. If you have two options, your chances of selling that higher price one goes down significantly. When you have three, you're gonna move that second one way more than you're gonna move the bottom one or the top one. So in my opinion, tiered pricing equals that win. I'm not looking at my notes at all, so if there's something on there I didn't mention, I apologize. I've had a good amount of caffeine today, so I talk a little fast. If you have questions, let me know. Um, I kind of talked about the volume pricing, so I'll jump on after this, but I really think that like having that first option and then having that ability to create that relationship, which I'm gonna talk about in the next slide, to get them out of that first tier and into that second tier is super important. All right, so how do you convince someone like me to bring on your product? Now, being emerging brands, there's a good chance that you're not gonna to talk to me first because I'm in, high, in Ohio. You can probably go talk to Katie because she can get you on that bar shelf real fast. What is it, $45 and you can get into your area? 45, I think. For me, it's a whole lot of jumping through hoops, but you know what, I'll come here and I'll taste it and maybe I'll bring your Sotol and I'll throw it on my back bar and we'll see. We'll, we'll pick who can serve it and who can't, right? Your sister's got a bottle for me. Um, but big, first thing is you gotta get in front of their eyes. So really, the question is, what kind of budget do you have? What kind of people do you have? And what kind of passion do you have? So do you want to be targeted or do you want to be wide net? If you're targeted, you're going to look at reps, brand ambassadors, set up meetings. It's a lot of time, a lot of effort. You're going to meet the people. You're going to get the relationships. Wide net, you can do things like magazine articles, target digital ads, viral videos, or uh, being that I am a uh, national secretary of the United States Bartenders Guild, you can come to the United States Bartenders Guild and come chip in on a national sponsorship, uh, that's an option, but I'm not here to plug that. Uh, second one is how do you wanna get behind my bar? That's the big one, okay, now I know about you, now you're gonna get behind my bar, maybe you'll collect us, maybe not. The hope is that you don't. So there's some, a few th different things you need to do. My big thing right off the bat is I need to know there's quality there. I'm gonna do a blind tasting, I wanna know the story, I wanna know that your stills are of quality, I wanna know the ingredients are going in with heart and passion. Second one, like I said, that rich storytelling. Um, Andy Furman is in my state. We meet once a week. I don't know if anyone has had the pleasure of Andy, knowing Andy Furman. She is one of the best storytellers I've ever known. She could probably convince me to sell, I don't know, cream de mint, you know, whiskey sour if I, if I really wanted to. But uh, she's great. But the storytelling is super important. And I know each of your brands, you've got a reason that you did it. One of my favorite things I was told was when I was trying to look into starting the bar, somebody just stopped me and said, why? Why did you want to do this? You want to make a product, why? Why is it different? Why, is it, why are you passionate? Why do you care? Why am I not just buying the gin that I bought for 20 years? Why am I choosing you and why are you choosing this? So knowing that story of why you did it and why you want to put that there and why it matters to you is super important. Like, Why put your whole life into this if it's not there? I, I'm guessing most of you have that or the brands that you're bringing on have that. So getting that storytelling out there is super important. Personal approach. Also important as well, I know that when you're going that wide net, it's hard to have that, but eventually, hopefully that turns into dollars, hopefully those dollars turn into an ability to actually have individuals that can come to me, or hell, 
It's not very much to throw out a Zoom video or to record something and tell that story and get that across, or to come to one of these where you can kind of get a lot of people in a very small amount of time. And then the last one I put is passion that kind of transfers through with all the different topics that I've talked about. But that passion, in my opinion, is very contagious. You know, when I have a brand rep come through and they seem like they're stressed, they're not getting enough sleep, they're taking smoke breaks, not wanting to talk to my bartenders, that's when I kind of lose interest. When they're there, they want to hang out with our crew afterwards. When they love nothing but talking about their product, that's where I react. That's where I get into it. Um, getting into my menu, that should be a goal. Um, I know, I don't know, probably five years ago, I got flown out to France because of Citadel Gin. And I don't know what it was that originally got. I, I know what it was. It was a damn good gin for $17. Bang for the buck right there. And they just saw out of nowhere that there was cases upon cases moving out on a weekly basis out of Cleveland, Ohio, and they didn't really know why. And it was because of the bang for the buck. I heard the quality ingredients, and then eventually I started meeting the reps and stuck with it. But when you get on that menu, you will get movement. You'll get movement not only on one cocktail, but many cocktails because we do volume. And for the most part, Cassandra Holloway, my beverage director here, is going to use smart decisions to make sure that we stay at that cost of goods sold that keeps our investors happy and keeps me happy because while she doesn't know it, I get a lot of guff whenever it, I try to soften that message when I pass it on to her, but it happens. Um, and then enticing the menu creators. So for me, I create a lot of influence and ideas, but really what matters is Cassandra Holloway needs to buy into your product. Now, a lot of that's going back to the point that I made last, the passion, the storytelling, getting that in front of their face and staying in front of their face. Um, but that tiered pricing as well, will do that. So once again, getting in the door, staying in that bang for the buck, coming back in with upsell options and then having that tasting option when they want to try really what you have and what you're passionate about. And then the last part is maintaining your placement. I think all of you probably have a lot of different woes of the uh, new bar manager coming in and all of a sudden your product that you've been fighting to have on that back bar and in those cocktails gets replaced with another one that their buddy happens to represent or they seem to think is good. But staying on that menu is very important to make sure that you get movement and make sure that you're in these bars. So some things I said, I've already talked about a little bit, bang for your buck, staying in front of my eyes, making sure that I see things. I mean, some very simple marketing tools could be email lists. I know a lot of us don't respond well to it, but it is little things, you know, that you, the, the old rule used to be is to see it three times. Now I think it's something like 23 times to get in front of my eyes to make me understand it. But I will tell you, like, I bought dumb little shirts with octopuses on it because I saw it on Facebook the fifth time and I bought it and it works. So getting in front of my eyes repetition wise, and knowing that there's quality and having these relationships, it does work. And then building and maintaining those rep relationships. Now, once again, we're going back, these are emerging brands. You may not be able to have the ability to have relationships on a weekly, daily basis, but you know, strategically using like marketing tools, like using um, email lists, you can do a lot of different automations now. I'm sure a lot of you know about the different automations that can happen just to send out emails that feel natural and authentic. I know one thing I was using through a CRM recently, I was able to make a reservation. If it was a, if I marked that it was a birthday, I could leave them a voicemail, would give them a 0.2 second call, go straight to voicemail after that. It would be a voicemail from the owner saying, I'm very happy that you're spending your birthday with us. We're so excited to have you. We'll see you on the upcoming date. So super generic, but you can do a lot of things without a lot of work and without a lot of effort to kind of come across as that. Now it seems disingenuous, but let's be honest, when you have a limited budget, you need to be creative. 